My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning, this afternoon. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Thank you so much for having me. It's nice to meet you. Um, my name is Amber Collins, and I'm the owner of Amber Collins Fitness LLC. I've been a personal trainer for seven years, and most of that time I've been independently training and really trying to have my own business as an entrepreneur. Um, I am live right now from, uh, I'm from Portland, Oregon, and, uh, but right now I'm in Salem, Oregon, so. Awesome, Portland, Oregon. Yes, a lot of it's, it's rainy. You guys, of, it's you, guys rainy. Get, <laughs> you guys get a lot of rain and you guys have a lot of farm. Yes, it's beautiful, yeah. but sometimes a little gray. <laughs> there you go. So I got a question for you. What's the difference between a profile that's for fitness versus modeling? Because I feel like a lot of individuals that I see for fitness, it's more of a modeling page mm. versus fitness page. How do you differentiate between those two? And that's not a question I would have ever, ever asked. The audiences were asking, so I wanted to ask. Absolutely. I'm that's my question. So one of the big things that I would look for is um, education. So I've never wanted my Instagram to just be a, a bunch of selfies. And a lot of I've had my Instagram for six years now, and I try to keep everything on there since the beginning. And you can go back and look at my journey and I'm just a regular gal and I'm a mom and I have a family. So, um, you know, fitness models, things like that, their Instagrams are gorgeous. And um, I'm a big supporter of everyone. So, I mean, I understand that it can still inspire people. But um, for me as a professional, I like to not just post a aesthetic, good looking picture. It, there's got to be some sort of education that you're gaining from that. And I do like a lot of my followers to know, hey, this is my backstory. I don't just look like this. And I might be a little older than you think I actually am. There's a story behind that there. Love it, love it. So here's my question. I see a lot of entrepreneurs, when they go out there, I feel like we could individuals that are in regular businesses, I think we can learn from individuals that are in fitness. Because I feel like you guys... Put your, I mean, you have to put your content out there. And you guys are comfortable showing it. So whatever, it could be selfie, it could be static, it could be video, it could be training, it could be your sweating, all of this stuff. I feel like you guys master the art of marketing a lot longer than other people that are trying to get out there because there's still a lot of hesitation in them putting their face out there, you know? I feel like a lot of people put posts where their face is not on it. Their picture is not on it. It's not them saying it. It's a quote that they found. So what is some of your recommendation for all industries that individuals that have good content, but they're not putting it out there? Right. I think it's definitely, I mean, with having your own business is a risk. You, if you're an entrepreneur at heart, you're a risk taker. And you, even though, you know, I'm petrified to, you know, it's scary to put yourself out there, no matter who you are, even if you're confident. Um, but as a business owner, you have to be willing to stand by your business. And people love the underdog and people love supporting small business. And that's becoming more of a thing. And so I think it's important to um, not just stand by your business, but people want to know who they're giving their money to. So you, you know, if you are um, having your good core values and representing your business well, people want to know the face behind the business. And the more they get to know you and what you stand for and your values, they're more likely to be a customer and want to support that business. Love it, love it. So let's say I'm fearful of putting myself out there. Where should I start from? What's your recommendation? And I see this among more of my, because I work with a lot of different influencers and specifically mindset coaches. Right. I feel like the females are more gutsy. They just put it out there and they don't worry about it. A lot of the guys, they talk a lot, but when it comes to social media, they're like a bunch of chickens. Like they don't, <laughs> they, they, I'm like, why are you afraid? Like why one post in two weeks? Like, come on. I know you know a lot. Like, why are you not putting out it? They're like, yeah, I know, you know. I, I, you know. So they got a bunch of excuses. 
that they come up with. But I, on the other side, I mean, I work with some vicious female coaches. Like they are, uh, I'm scared sometimes of how much they put out. Like I'm all like, damn, I can't be in a mastermind group with them. I'm going to, I'm going to get killed. With them. <laughs> you know, I'm all like, I'm scared to be like, I brought another coach to be in that mastermind group. I'm all like, listen, if I ever die, like you got the backup, like there's two of us in there again, six of them, but it might be as well. Like it, it's compared to like 50 other females. They, they are on top of their shit. So mm -hmm. If I'm a guy out there and I want to put myself out there, put my content, where should I start? What's your recommendation to those people? Um, I think it's okay to start, you know, small. Like, it's a big industry and you don't ever have to do anything that you don't feel comfortable with. Um, just putting yourself out there bit by bit, slowly but surely being genuine. Um, I think a big part of putting yourself out there is you need to be yourself and it's important to listen and learn from your mentors. And there's a lot of people in the industry that I do look up to them. Um, but you don't need to exactly mimic what they're doing. You can take those lessons. And if you're not comfortable posting, um, a two pack ab picture, you know, or where you started from, you know, you can just post a picture where you are closed and you're like, you know what, these are my inches and this is where I'm starting. And people respect that a lot. And that's how you're going to grow your target market is because you're going to be attracting the right customers, the right audience, and the people that can relate to you specifically. So it's hard to put yourself out there. But people aren't going to know you and they're not going to care if you don't put yourself out there. And you need to be like everything else. You need to be consistent. People, there's a psychology behind something that if you look at a picture, you know, it becomes familiar. So there's definitely something to be said about, oh, okay, they posted something. It's whatever. Oh, okay, they posted. It. Eventually, people will continue to see that. And if you're posting the right content and you are being genuine with what you're about and all of those things then it's going to eventually start something for you yeah i, I agree with that the small steps at a time because it is very overwhelming it doesn't matter what industry you are there are there's a lot of noise especially on social media because a lot of people are utilizing it so here's my other question for you i see a lot of entrepreneurs especially business owners Mm -hmm. They don't have their goals in line. As a business owner, how important is it for people to have their goals? How do you go about it? What are some of the tips that you could give us in like, okay, this is my goal as a business owner for my employees or for how many sales I want to, whatever the case might be. How do you go about doing those goals and how did you learn that? So I... I am a very, very passionate person and most entrepreneurs are. So I think it's important to learn how to um, use your passion correctly and not waste time doing things that you think may be important, but logically they aren't. So one of my downfalls over the years that I've had to get better at is being organized and looking at logically with your risk, calculated risks. So um, you want to take the time to create that foundation and to build those steps and to be able to adapt. Obviously, we're going through some crazy times with 2020. And one of the biggest things that any business has to do is be able to adapt. You might not be able to use your plan A, maybe not even your plan B. You need to have a plan A, B, C, D, E, F and go on from there and not quit and to keep going and make sure that um, you do have a plan for if things happen and study. Study what, um, I don't like to use the word fails, but that's how you get to success. So if this fails, okay, what did I learn from that experience? What can I do differently? Why did that not work? And then ask for feedback. I love reviews. And any time I've had, you know, a negative comment or feedback, depending on if it's constructive, I definitely take it to heart and try and um, adapt and change my business as time evolves. 
I love that. So here's my question. What's your favorite self-help book? Um, I love Brendan Burchard's uh, High Performance Habits and the uh, Motivation uh, Manifesto with him. He just has a way of sometimes when I'm reading his books, I get so hyped up and passionate and ready to work that I have to put it down. Like I can't read them at night because I won't go to bed. Um, so his books have helped me be more organized with my choices and lay out a lot of clarity to, and it, it's amazing how much the business and self-help book didn't just help me with business but it helps me with my own personal life as well so i agree with that so what is your routine is it 10 minutes during the day is it more audio content is it more physical book what are some of the things that has helped you um so i usually i'm i'm a woman of many hats so when i have a moment and i have to regroup and not just, you know, meditate or take time to get my mind right. The reading definitely helps. And I usually do about 20 minutes or so uh, every night and writing down um, everything as well. And in the book I mentioned, um, there's actual like worksheets you can download. And I'm very old school. I love to write things down because it helps me memorize it. And I almost never have to go back to certain content I write down because I, I remember it because I wrote it down, so. Why are you in Portland, Oregon? Why are you over there? <laughs> There's a place called Los Angeles. You should look it up on the map. Why are you over there? Why uh, would somebody be in the rain and foggy in the sky? Oh my, OMG, <laughs> OMG. Um, my family is here. Um, my, uh, this is where I grew up and don't get me wrong, I have, I'm have i a wanderlust at heart, and I've lived a little bit on the East Coast, and um, I lived in Puerto Rico for a few months, and um, but yeah, now I'm back. So, And to be honest, a lot of my, I don't really have a lot of turnover with clients, in-person clients, so um, I've had clients for six years, and they're all here. So um, my clients that... Um, have helped me get where I am today. You know, they're they're located here, so. Got it, got it. It's all right. It's cool. But <laughs> Los Angeles, there is a place on the map, Los Angeles. So. Okay, I will check it out. <laughs> definitely, definitely check it out. No, I'm messing with you. Listen, I want to thank you so much. How do people find you? Oh, uh, well, my Instagram is ACK7Go, and my website is AmberCollinsFitness.com. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time out of your busy schedule being with us definitely stay safe and hopefully we'll be able to do more videos absolutely thank you so much for having me you got it. Have a talk good to one. you soon bye, bye, -bye.